Hey, uh, good morning and welcome to JPR Internship Week. I am Professor Todd Henneman, the Internship Coordinator for the Department of Journalism and Public Relations, and I am so happy that you are joining us this morning. We have a great series of events planned for the next three days. Tomorrow we will have, uh, we will hear from three recent graduates who will discuss their own internship experiences and how to leverage internships when looking for job opportunities. They work for places ranging from the LA 28 Olympics Committee to the Wall Street Journal. Then on Thursday, we will hear from alumni who have at least five years of experience, and they'll share how they landed jobs at places like ESPN and Amazon, and what advice they wish someone would have given them when they were JPR students. But today is all about you and helping you prepare for Journalism 498, the internship class. I'll cover the essentials so you start off the semester well, and then I'll turn it over to Sammy Cortez, who will moderate a panel of current Journalism 498 students. They'll be sharing their own advice, including how they found their internships. Throughout the session, please drop your questions into the chat. We'll wrap up by addressing those questions. But before I forget, I want to remind you about your chance to win a great prize. Everyone who attends today's session will be entered into a drawing for a chance to win this Long Beach, oh, oh it's not letting me display it. There we go. <laughs> this Long Beach State sweatshirt. And um, to qualify, you need to make sure that your Zoom profile displays your actual name. If you're not sure how to do that or change it, I'm going to drop into the chat right now a resource that explains how to change the name that is displayed. You also need to attend the entire session because we will announce the winner at the end of the session and you must be present to win. So I'm going to start off with just some very basics because I want to make sure everyone is starting from the same place. So what is an internship? An internship is a form of what we call experiential learning. That's kind of the fancy way of saying it is the process of learning by doing. It pulls on the skills and knowledge that you've learned in classes and provides you the opportunity to apply those in a professional workplace, all while receiving coaching and guidance by a supervisor who is engaged day to day in the profession. There are a lot of benefits to internships. An internship uh, uh, lets you apply your talent and your skills. You all are talented and have a solid foundation of skills. Internships help bolster your confidence. You will see that you can do this. You can do journalism or you can do public relations in a workplace. It also builds your portfolio with examples from outside the classroom and it develops your social capital, those all important networks of professional relationships. Perhaps most importantly, it lets you figure out what you like and what you don't like with a built-in exit. Why else do we require you have at least one internship before graduating? Well, it's for a super practical reason. We want you to get a job when you graduate. And uh, people who have internships are 35% more likely to get at least one job offer after graduating. They're also more likely to earn more than students who did not have an internship. There's a wealth of, an experience, uh, of research into this area, and so we know that this pays off. Internships are the number one way employers identify candidates for full-time jobs. And when they're looking at two equally qualified candidates at a job opening, employers cite internship experience as the number one deciding factor in who they select for the role. So how do you find an internship? Well, uh, I'll be giving you five tips. The first one is you could look at your dream employer. Maybe you don't have one. So this tip doesn't apply to you. But some people have a dream of, I want to eventually work for Disney, or I want to work for CNN. Well, 
major employers will have a career section of their website. Go to it and see if they list internships. I have one caveat to this tip, which is many of the biggest employers, let's say the New York Times or the Los Angeles Times or ABC or Telemundo, recruit internship, interns far in advance. So they may already be looking for summer interns. And you can do this class in the summer, um, but they might not be looking for spring. But you might look out and they might be looking. So if you have a dream employer, give it a shot. See if they have something. My second tip is check the JPR website regularly. Dan Olson, who is here in the webinar with us, and I collaborate on keeping this up to date. And part of my job is I am talking to you holding Zoom sessions, um, emailing with different employers all the time, trying to find new internship opportunities, especially ones that are exclusive to our students. I'm really focusing on building long-term relationships with these places. And so the JPR website is updated on a regular basis. We just updated it yesterday, and you'll find a lot of uh, listings right there. So Sammy dropped into uh, the um, into the chat uh, the link. I will quickly change screens and just show you the um, internship page. So this you should bookmark. If you go to our uh, JPR website, there's this internship category. There is the about section that covers some basics. You can see all about internship week here, but right now what's probably most important to you is the spring 2024 internships and the summer 2024 internships. If you go here, it has the listing that I was talking about and uh, it's updated. So it's not in like alphabetical order. It's from most recent to oldest. Um, you'll notice some have deadlines. So university police, they are uh, looking for interns. They regularly have posted our interns, but the deadline's December 1st. Ones that don't list a deadline didn't give me a deadline. Many of them told me that they have kind of rolling deadlines. Basically, they're looking for the best candidates. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, Dan includes links to previous semesters. So if you want to reach out to a place that you don't see listed here, one option is to go and see if it listed it in the if we listed an opportunity in the past and to reach out to that place as well. So I strongly recommend that you bookmark this because like I said, we update it on a regular basis. And um, we know that these are internships that are good matches for our program and our requirements, which I'll be talking more about the requirements in just a minute. You also um, could check CSULB Career Link. So Career Link is run out of the Career Development Center. And sometimes uh, the Career Development Center gets listings that the employer didn't think to send directly to me, or I haven't reached out yet to the place. So um, Career Link is available through the single sign-on and Sammy just dropped into the chat instructions on how to access Career Link. So that's another place that you want to check on a regular basis. Um, my fourth tip is to search reputable job listing sites. I know occasionally we have students who are in the Zooms uh, versions of Journalism 498, and they are someplace else. They're in San Diego, or they are um, uh, they're trying to look for a place that maybe they commute to campus, but they're looking for a place that is closer to their home in Riverside. Uh, I'm less likely to have ones for places that are further from Long Beach on the JPR listing site. So then you'll want to do more independent research. And you're really good at this as journalism and public relations majors. So I'd encourage you to focus on reputable job listing sites. Um, the California Internet, Internet Network has internships that are designed to work with the CSU program. Um, government jobs often have paid internships available. I know that the city of Long Beach has a couple there right now. Idealist tends to be a place that hosts internships with nonprofits. So if you're really interested in doing some kind of advocacy, PR, or you have a cause that's close to your heart, um, this might be a good place to look. Uh, indeed, 
uh, and Monster are more traditional job listing sites. And LinkedIn is emerging as the biggest job listing site as all of all. And it has a job search function. You can even create a tailored alert to be sent to you uh, when certain keywords are used in listings. So lean into those and uh, see if you can find something that maybe I don't know about or that meets your own particular needs better. And the fifth tip is network. If I were you, what I would do is I would tell every person I know that I'm looking for an internship. Uh, even if I didn't think that they could help me out because they might know someone who could help me out. They might introduce me uh, to someone who's in the HR department of where they work. So don't be shy that you're looking for an internship. Let your family, your friends, your neighbors, let people know. Also attend networking events. The Career Development Center offers occasional networking events. Go to those, even if they aren't talking about communication jobs per se, um, any big employer is going to have a communications department. Uh, reach out to alumni through LinkedIn. Keep in mind, our alumni, especially if they've graduated in the last five years, so under our current curriculum structure, have been in your exact shoes before. They relate to needing to find an internship. And so reaching out through LinkedIn in a friendly way in a way that's not like I want a job, but that um, expresses interest in what they're doing and asking for advice can be a good way to kind of start that conversation. And in addition to attending the meetings of our chapters here of the professional associations, you might wanna consider going to one meeting of the professional chapter, meaning like the LA or Orange County chapter of these associations. The uh, Sammy just dropped in links to their websites and Instagrams where they post things. I used to be the faculty advisor to NABJ, and I can tell you the uh, professionals at the LA meeting of NABJ loved it when our students attended the meeting. And they were enthusiastic about introducing students to other people there. So this is both a good way to build your network, but also possibly find out about internships. It's the whole idea of like the more people who know that you're looking for one, the more people who are there to help you. So I want to remind you, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, but I'm going to move into kind of what we are looking for in an internship and what I recommend you look for in an internship. Sometimes students ask me, what makes a good internship? So I want to uh, encourage you not to be dazzled don't, uh, by mentions of we work with celebrities or we work with big name influencers because yes, that agency might work with celebrities, but that doesn't mean you are going to work with a celebrity. So sometimes places put out all the shiny stuff that makes them seem amazing. But if, if you're looking for a good experience, look for ones that specify meaningful work, meaning like look beyond their description of them, like we're an award winning this or that. Like, I feel like everyone in the world has won an award at this point that saying you're award winning something doesn't mean what it probably did one time. Look for what they say you will be doing and uh, look that it is meaningful work. Are you going to be writing and uh, reporting and writing stories for their blog? Are you going to be creating content and uh, managing a social media calendar? Are you going to be writing news releases and pitching media? Um, look for your responsibilities. And that's something good also to ask about when you are in an internship. So look at the description, really focus on what will you be doing? You don't wanna be doing clerical work. Um, that's not going to be meaningful experience for you. And it's not the kind of internship that we want you to have in Journalism 498. So Journalism 498 does have certain requirements. And I'm going to talk in a moment about some of the safety nets that are built in to make sure that you don't get an internship. That's all clerical work. Um, but kind of big level stuff is you need to complete at least 100 hours at your internship by the end of the semester. This isn't an astronomical amount. Um, I think we've adjusted it over time to actually a little bit less. 
And I know that some programs uh, require much more. So this is very manageable. Uh, I often tell students that if you kind of cut out the first couple of weeks of the semester and the last couple of weeks, it averages to 10 hours a week. But you need to complete at least 100 hours by the end of the semester. You also need to be supervised by a seasoned professional. As a general guideline, I say that someone who has five years of experience. Um, but the idea is we don't want you uh, being supervised by someone who graduated last May because they're not going to have kind of the depth of experience that can provide you the most meaningful feedback and coaching and training. Um, we expect these internships to be uh, skill development ones, focusing on developing skills. So practicing doing what you've learned about and practiced in classrooms. So the reporting, the designing graphics, um, the editing, uh, things like that, uh, really meaningful work. And uh, along the way, you'll be receiving training, coaching, and mentoring. Uh, when I talk to places about offering internships, I make it clear to them that they shouldn't expect you to walk in the door knowing everything. Uh, this is a learning experience. And so they should have that mindset too, that they are going to be providing regular feedback and help and mentoring um, throughout your internship experience. So I mentioned we have some safety nets built in along the way. The first one is the internship proposal. So um, this is something that you should complete when you have been offered an internship. And my recommendation would be complete this when you've been offered, but before you've accepted so that we know you're accepting one that will be okay. I will review these in a really timely manner. And most places should be willing to give you, even for an internship, like a day to think about it. And so this is a Qualtrics form you fill out that describes what you'll be doing for your supervising. This is that safety check so that I can look at it and be like, yes, the supervisor has enough experience um, to be providing meaningful supervision. So if you do not complete the proposal and you just start an internship, I can't promise you that this internship is going to satisfy our credit. Um, and so it's essential that you fill out the proposal. Uh, then once you start the internship, the next three are ones that you will be um, getting from your supervisor. You'll complete a learning contract with guidance from me um, with your supervisor. And this is basically the agreement between you and the supervisor about where you'll be working, when you'll be working, what you'll be doing. This is another way for me to make sure that you're getting meaningful experience, but also to make sure that you're having a good experience in terms of there's like not a miscommunication, that you aren't surprised they're expecting you to work on Thursday because it should already be spelled out in this contract that you two have uh, looked at together and agreed upon. Then you will get um, what I sometimes for shorthand call the midpoint evaluation. It's uh, when you hit the 50 hour mark, this is a chance for both me and you to get feedback from your supervisor about how you're doing. And the idea is that um, that they affirm what you're doing well, so that they're encouraging you, but they also give you feedback on what they'd like to see you perhaps try to do a little bit better or differently in the second half of the internship. So if you get negative feedback, don't feel bad. Take it as useful information that you can incorporate into your experience in the second half of the semester. And then the final evaluation is them looking back at your overall performance. So you know how you did. And you need to turn in these four documents to pass Journalism 498, to get academic credit. This is a credit, no credit class, but you cannot get credit <laughs> if you do not have these four core documents, because these are documenting your internship experience. Um, some other factors sometimes students ask about is if you can work more than 100 hours. Short answer is yes. <laughs> um, longer answer is that's up to you, meaning you might be offered a phenomenal internship, but they tell you that they want you to commit to working at 20 hours a week. What I would tell you is 
you need to consider this. You know your life better than anyone else. Can you manage this? If you think about your course load and any other commitments that you have and what you'll get out of this internship and feel that you can do this and this is worth that amount of time, then go for it. However, <laughs> if you think like, this is really gonna be a stretch. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> and you think that you, you can see like you might not do as well in your classes or might not do as well in the internship, don't create a situation that is going to lead you to be disappointed and other people to be disappointed. So you can work more than 100 hours. I definitely have had students who have selected internships that uh, required them to work more than 100 hours, but they took this all into consideration. The other thing is sometimes internships will uh, say that they want you to, let's say, work 15 hours a week, but they aren't expecting you to work the entire semester. Remember, our semester begins basically end of January, late January, and ends at beginning of May. So we have February, February, March, April, and we have like three and a little bit more, like three and kind of a half months. Sometimes internships are looking for not quite as long of a commitment, but more hours. So you're basically done faster. If that works for you, that's fine with me. As long as you get the 100 hours, it doesn't have to be stretched over the whole semester. It could be through a more condensed time. Just make sure you can manage that. Um, your internships can be in-person, remote, or hybrid. Since we've emerged from the pandemic, more places have retained uh, both a remote or a hybrid model. So uh, don't be surprised if you see in the listings kind of a mix of those opportunities. And you can repeat Journalism 498 a second time with another internship if you wanted to. So as you're looking, if you see, if you're not graduating in May and you see an internship that you really wanted, but the deadline passed but for spring, but they're looking for summer, you could do an internship if you wanted to in spring and then go for this other internship in summer and repeat Journalism 498 for academic credit all over again. So I want you to look now, like before I go any further, if I have like a big flashing sign, do not wait until the beginning of spring semester to look for your internship. You want to start looking now. I know we're entering a really busy time of the semester with finals approaching, but start carving out. Maybe it's just an hour a week, but looking for internships because you don't want it to be the first week of class when you start looking. Um, you need to secure your internship depending on your supervisor by the end of the second week or end of the third week. The end of the third week would be like the hard deadline for kind of no matter who your supervisor is. And you have to consider they're going to want to, they, they need to review all the applicants. They want to interview people. There might be second interviews. That can take some time. So um, start looking as soon as possible. But when you're looking, you want to make sure your material's ready to roll. And so update your resume. And the Career Development Center is offering a workshop next Monday. Um, it's an in-person workshop where they will provide coaching on uh, writing resumes and cover letters. So this is perfect timing for us. And if you want to attend that, you can RSVP through the link that Sammy dropped into the chat. If you can't make that, I strongly encourage you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment before you leave for winter break. Um, that Sammy also put in the link of how you can do that. But you want to have a solid resume. Then uh, many places will ask you to write a cover letter by email usually. Um, you want to tailor your cover letter to the opportunity. So kind of look at what they're looking for and think about your skills and do a matching game. Like they say uh, they're looking for someone who can create social media posts. I know how to use Canva and I've created social media posts. So mention that in your cover letter, do like a matching game. Um, and then update your LinkedIn profile. I'm always surprised when I see a student's profile, they're looking for an internship, but I can tell that they haven't looked update this profile in a long time. And make sure you're not just listing jobs, list all jobs, but also clubs, any volunteer experience and highlighting relevant skills. You want to market yourself. 
and be ready to answer these two questions if you get an interview. Why you? Why should they pick you? What about you makes you qualified for this? And why them? There's going to be a version of this, these two questions in any interview. So you want to think through like what are the skills that you can point out, relevant classes, any relevant experience, and why them? So look at their website or their social media and find some reasons that you can genuinely cite about why you want to work for them. Um, after interviews, be sure to send thank you notes. This is going to differentiate you from people who don't send thank you notes. General guideline is to send them within 24 hours of the interview. You want to open it by expressing your appreciation. Thanks for the opportunity to interview for, fill it in. Um, refer to when the interview occurred. They probably interviewed a lot of people. So if it was yesterday, say, was today Tuesday, Monday. Um, include one specific of something that you learned in the interview, what you'd be doing, something about the place, so that they know you were paying attention. And then use it as a chance to sell yourself one more time. Like, why are you a good fit? And end by reaffirming your interest. So like, I'm so interested in this. I would love the opportunity to work with you. Sending these follow-up emails is going to help you. It's something that is going to make you come across as a more polished professional. So I want to make sure that we have time for, oh, purpose of class sessions. Last thing I'm gonna say before I hand it over to Sammy and the panel, sometimes students ask, why do I need to take Journalism 498 as a class? Well, one, it's a mechanism for me to monitor your experience through those documents we talked about. But then in the class sessions, we hone related skills, how to write professional emails, um, how to build your network at work, how to get the most out of your experience, how to handle different challenges that you may encounter, the supervisor who doesn't respond to emails, uh, something that went wrong in an in internship. And then for the end of the semester, we pivot into talking about next steps in your career journey. So how can you position your internship in your resume? And how can you talk about it in job interviews? So I'm going to hand it over to Sammy. And please, um, as the panel is talking, or um, at, if you, whether it's a question about something they said or something I said, I, welcome you to put those questions in the chat because we're setting aside some time at the end to discuss those. Did an interview with Sammy. Sorry, Sammy. <laughs> so, um, uh, so let me introduce uh, uh, Sammy Cortez, who will moderate our, our panel of current Journalism 498 students. Sammy is a journalism major, and this semester she interned with the JPR department managing the JPR X channel. You probably know it better as Twitter. Sammy also hosts a radio show for 22 West and serves as the arts and life assistant editor at the Daily 49er. So Sammy, take it away. Thank you, Professor Hinneman. Uh, today we have three great panelists who like me are enrolled in Journalism 498 this semester. Emily Cortez is a public relations major this semester, she has interned at Tatcha, where she is a part of the influencer marketing team. This is her fifth position in the field. Joining Emily and me is Deanira Lopez Olivas. Deanira is a public relations major. This semester, she has interned at Rachel Dares PR, where she gained a lot of writing experience. And our last panelist is Jose Cervantes. Jose is a journalism major who has interned this semester at Long Beach's own Beachcomber News. He is also an independent tech journalist. Throughout our discussion today, please feel free to submit your questions in the chat, as Todd said earlier. We'd love to hear from you and we'll reserve the last portion of the panel for answering your questions. So I know that most people here are in need of an internship for the spring semester. Let's start off with how you all found your internships. Jose, can you tell us a little bit about how you found your position at Beachcomber News and what you remember from the interview process? Yes, I can. Thank you, Sammy. It's a pleasure to be here. So I found uh, the inter uh, internship applications at the JPR website. I think the JPR internship list is a very good list and a very diverse list of where to find internships, no matter what you're looking for. That's ultimately where I found the Beachcomber News, 
And the interview process uh, took me by surprise and it still takes me by surprise. And I see that in a very good way. So as with any other uh, interview, uh, you get the basic questions of um, what you're like, what are your plans as a journalist? Uh, why are you interested in applying for the Beach Tomer News? But at the very end, it turns into a very meaningful and thoughtful conversation about your life and about the supervisor's life, uh, Jay. And as long as you're open and honest with him, he'll be uh, open and honest with you back. And I think that's what made that day uh, very nice for me. I left that interview very glad because I knew that Jay would be a very nice supervisor, would always uh, be there to help me. And I think that interview and that conversation is one of the best things you could have ever asked for because it's not scary and it's very friendly. So I really like that day. Thank you for sharing. I'd like to pass along the same question to the Anita and Emily as well. Um, I can just go ahead and start. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, so I am currently interning, as Sammy mentioned, at Tatcha. And I found this internship through LinkedIn. I'm basically on LinkedIn every single day. And it's like one of my one of my favorite platforms to use to network with other people in my desired field um, in beauty marketing. So as I really want to continue that, um, I really, when I saw this opportunity open up, I applied right away, had my resume right away saved in my files. So it was a very um, scary um, kind of um, process in a way, just because I didn't know if I was, you know, going to get the position as I've always really admired Tatcha's story as a company, but also, you know, what they do within influencing marketing. So I've always been very interested. Um, but in regards to the inter um, the interview process, um, that was about like a month long full of interviews. I first started off with the senior manager, which is my current manager, Emiliana. And she has been honestly like one of the best managers I've had in all the positions I've been in. She's been very helpful um, in our conversations we have, um, in addition to um, having another interview with um, the assistant manager, Cassinda, which is again, they all are again within like the similar age range as all of us in a way. So they're like a you know, a couple years older. So it makes it really easy and comfortable, which has been really um, easy for me to communicate with them with my concerns on also stuff I want to learn more about. And then I also had a panel interview with the coordinator, Emily, as well. And also, sorry, um, the assistant uh, affiliate marketing manager, um, Margo. So it was really um, amazing to get to know them. And at that point, I thought, you know what, the interviews are over. I will probably hear something back. But after that, it was about a full week. I didn't hear anything back. I was feeling a little down, but, you know, I decided to follow up with the recruiter and, you know, ask for any updates. I really recommend for everyone to do that, you know, update as much as you can, follow up with, as Todd mentioned, with specific dates, all of that. So after that, she let me know that I would have a last round of interviews with the director of consumer engagement and PR, Michelle. Huang, and it was really amazing to me here as our conversation was very, um, you know, it was very relaxed and it didn't feel a lot of tension as, to be honest, like I do um, struggle with, you know, if I see like a title of like director VP, I'm like, oh my God, like I need to, you know, do my best and all of that. But she made it really easy and comfortable. So it was really um, amazing to meet with her. And after that, that same day, I was offered the position. So I was really excited. And, you know, it's been really, the past three months have been really exciting and really fulfilled. Yeah. Thank you, Emily, for sharing. Um, my name is Anita, and I mentioned I interned with Rachel Darius PR. Um, I found this internship through the postings that um, Todd would send us through our emails every day. I mean, every week he would send a couple ones. Um, and I applied to her via email. Um, I sent my resume directly to Rachel. And then she set up a phone call where we talked about 20 minutes. She was very welcoming, very outgoing. And yeah, she 
pretty much hired me on the spot and just we just talked about start dates how long I would have I would need to work for how many hours and yeah she's been very a very good supervisor to work with she's been very supporting and willing to help me throughout my journey Thank you guys so much for sharing. So Emily, uh, you've had multiple internships before. Uh, why did you decide to take on more than one position and what's your advice on finding them? Uh, so I've had about five positions thus far, as mentioned earlier. Um, but honestly, I just really knew early on the job market is super competitive. So especially within, you know, the field that we are all in as journalism students, public relations, marketing, communications, all of that. So I really knew early on I needed to set myself apart and I encourage um, all JPR students to do this as well. Early on, if you have the opportunity to, you know, seek as many internship positions positions, whether that be through LinkedIn, through, you know, even reaching out to other um, people who, you know, who are in agencies, which I find that agencies do hire a lot of students right away. Although, unfortunately, they are unpaid. I feel like eventually that does pay off if you are fortunate to be able to do that in your time. I really do find that useful as my first three positions were all unpaid. So it's been a year and then after that, moving into in-house this past summer, I was at Mary Beauty, which I had the opportunity to be, you know, which was paid. So I was very fortunate of that, as well as now Atacha. So it's been really, you know, a little bit of roller coaster in that sense. But I really wanted to um, learn from others, not just my, you know, not just through my managers or supervisors, but through also other students that are in the internship. I really formed a lot of great connections this past summer at Merit, as well as my other um, experiences at agencies. So overall, I just really wanted to set myself up for the future and accumulate a couple years of experience while I'm an undergrad. As you know, as students, we have um, the, the flexibility to explore as much as we can as undergrad students. So I like to think of us as we're sponges trying to absorb as much knowledge as we can at this time. So for those who are listening, I really do encourage, you know, just to find any, um, you know, any internships that really do align with your interests, whether that be sports, beauty, um, anything like that, nonprofits, anything of that, reach out as much as you can, you know, especially to people who are recruiters, HR coordinators, um, even people who are within, you know, the desired title you would like to be in, in the future, definitely recommend to reach out as, you know, there may not be posting on their own pages, but there's still opportunities out there. All you really have to do is just communicate as much as you can. Yeah. Great. I love that sponge analogy and also the advice you provided as well. Thank you for that. So as JPR students, uh, we take a variety of classes that cover multimedia storytelling, communication, and much more. What are some of the skills that you all have learned here that have helped you succeed in your internship? Oh, okay, just go. Uh, but honestly, um, a lot of my knowledge within the JPR courses have been from our media design classes. Has always been really an outlet for flexibility, uh, an outlet of creativity. So I've always really learned from what we've taken from those courses. You know, when it comes to graphic design and all of that, and I've really applied that to marketing campaign decks, and I've applied you know those creativity skills slash organization skills to that as well. Um, in addition to honestly, like some of our journalism classes, our writing skills, how we should. Um, write to a certain targeted audience that has really helped as well when it comes to um, pitching decks and, some, you know, campaigns and stuff like that. So I probably would say those sort of stuff. Yeah. Continuing on what Emily said, I also believe that um, our digital tools, that which was a course that I took here, and also the written communication um, course has also been two courses that really gave me those skills that I use now in my internship. I feel that writing and being able to proofread my own writing has been a huge skill. And also um, understanding what I'm writing and who I'm writing it for, like having an actual purpose whenever I'm, I'm writing an article. And I think just having, like gaining that creative eye, like 
understanding and understanding that whatever you're putting out to social media, that it also has a purpose. Great, awesome. So reflecting upon your internships experiences so far, uh, what have you enjoyed the most about it? And what are some of your biggest takeaways from it? We can start off with Jose. Thank you. So I would say something I really like about the Beach Boomer News is that you really have a lot of room to experiment, whether it be like how I'm doing uh, technology journalism, entertainment journalism, uh, local Long Beach news, um, some international politics, you have a lot of room to experiment. And I think as long as uh, you make it very clear to the supervisor, Jay, about what sort of stories you want to write and whether uh, he can accommodate that and make it fit and work into uh, the newspaper because it's only served in Long Beach. Um, I think I think you can really get somewhere. Like, for example, I was able to write uh, international news and uh, tech news for the paper. And I think they came out really well. And even though they're not specifically Long Beach news, which is what the paper is, uh, it still fit the general audience very well. And something uh, that I would say is the biggest takeaway from inter interning there is that the interns and everyone who writes stories uh, for the newspaper, they really do come first. You feel very appreciative of how you can let yourself do whatever you want. Like I said, you have a lot of room to experiment. And that's how I sort of got the idea of, okay, well, maybe I don't really like writing politics too much, but local news like yes. Long Beach News, you know, that's pretty fun. You have a lot of versatility and it's just a really good way to dip your feet into the water uh, and you just really over time find what you really want to do that will help you out later on after your internship is done so I think you really take this internship as sort of a mini life story and a mini life lesson about what you want your future to look like. Would Emily and Deyanaida also like to share? Uh, yes. Uh, so some stuff that I really have, I would consider some accomplishments within my internship at Tatcha would be um, actually pretty recently we had a holiday event with a couple influencers that honestly I've looked up to since I was in middle school, even high school. So it's been really fulfilling to see our full circle moment within working the behind the scenes of putting together um, a certain events. For example, this one, I was in charge of filing invoices for, um, you know, getting all of the um, catering stuff, um, as well as transportation, all that sorts of stuff. Um, Cause no one really pays attention to those details, I would say, but I've always been really interested in looking at the behind the scenes and the fast paced environment you're really in, but I really overall really enjoyed it. And it's always been really interesting just to see um, as well, you know, the behind the scenes of all of that. Um, in addition to, you know, I know that I know most people, if you are on social media, see like influencers unbox PR packages and all that sorts of stuff. It's been really fulfilling to see um, or fulfilling to actually fulfill those orders and see the aftermath of those campaigns go out and, you know, scroll on your phone and see like, oh my God, I sent that. I feel like that's super, I don't know, that was super fulfilling for me and as well as just for um, a couple, again, influence that I've looked up to of being sent those stuff. It's been really awesome to see. And as well as working with a brand that, again, I've admired for as very many years. I've admired the founder's story as well as the company as a whole. So it's overall, it's been just like perfect for me. It's been really just amazing. So again, I really recommend for people to look for um, internships that like align with your true values and your interests as well because I feel like that's how you get the most out of an internship especially if it's something that you feel really close to your to your interests and honestly to your heart because that's how you will perform the best and find the most um, learning experiences as well. 
Um, what I've enjoyed the most about my internship is the being able to work and write about clients since like actual real clients since in class um, we usually write on hypo hypothetical scenarios and stuff like that and this being my first internship I really enjoy like actually seeing my work posted my articles posted or seeing that um, the agency shares something on social media that I made I think that's really rewarding. Awesome. Thank you so much. So sort of wrapping up, uh, for students enrolled in the Journalism 498 spring section, what do you recommend they start to do now? Um, I honestly just say look for as many positions as you can. I know for many, you know, who don't have experience, I was on, like, you know, I was in the same boat almost a year and a half ago, or honestly like a year ago. So I really just tailored my experiences at my part-time boba shop job and apply that to places where I know that they did event coordinating as I did a couple of stuff there. So I'd really just say tailor your own experiences, whether that be at a part-time job, volunteer work, any of that, and really um, tailor that to apply that to your resume and have that for, you know, internship positions. But I really say start looking now. I am myself looking for a spring internship um, for this upcoming semester. So I am again looking right now and I've been looking since maybe October, just really looking what's out there again, messaging other um, people who have the same position that you would like to be in, recruiters, all of that, just really be very vocal about it as well. I can say that honestly, by you attending this webinar, you are already doing something very well because I'll be honest with my life story and my whole internship process. I had no idea what to expect of any internship. I never attended any workshops. I never really looked out to any resources. I really had no one that I knew such as friends who had an internship or anything like that. So I think by you at least watching this webinar or at least going out to hear some stories, whether elsewhere, like articles and online, you really will get at least a general understanding of what to expect because I really had no idea what to expect. This sort of internship uh, course, 498, uh, long story short, it just came out of nowhere for me. I needed to take this course and I did not know that beforehand because I had other plans. Um, and even so, just hearing stories of how uh, interning works, whether it be like sports journalism and maybe you're not interested in sports journal journalism, at least hearing some story will actually help you. It will help you really think about what you wanna do and sort of the expectations you have for an internship because my expectations for this internship uh, was very fortunate. It, I was put in a very fortunate experience that I didn't even think was possible. I had this really, and it still kind of stands, really stereotypical uh, expectations of how, this is kind of funny, but how Peter Parker and his uh, boss, uh, J. Jonah Jameson, uh, kind of is. And I kind of think about that with CNN, Fox News, any big corporation. Uh, but even being kind of low scale, just Long Beach uh, City News with Beach Comer News, it is way, way, way more relaxed than that. So I think just hearing stories and knowing what you want your future to be like and trying to work to get there, it will help you a lot. So I do thank you all for at least attending this webinar. Similar to Jose's story, I feel that um, I took this class because it was a requirement. And now, and this is my last semester here. So now I regret not taking internships before because I feel that in internships you start like in a in a an agency like me where you're unpaid and then like Emily you see the difference like she's already getting paid she's working like in a place she actually admires and already had like background knowledge about it and for me I was just pretty much like I threw myself in here because it like I needed to complete this requirement so I think uh, my advice would be really um, get internships, the most internships you can. And I feel that once you do your first one, you're going to like love it and, and want to continue working in, in PR. 
That was really amazing advice. Thank you guys for sharing that. So I want to make sure that we answer any questions submitted into the chat. Uh, Professor Henneman, were there any questions sent over to you? Yes. So we have about 10 minutes left and I want to make sure that we cover everything. So I'm going to preface this by saying we might not get to all the questions and some of these are for the panelists. So if you could answer as concisely as possible, uh, that would help us out. So the first one is specifically for Emily. It says, uh, Emily, you've participated in, have you participated? <laughs> Excuse me, get no vertical. Emily, <laughs> have you participated in any of your uh, multiple internship roles concurrent with one another? So basically, have you ever had two internships at the same time? Um, I actually have this past January. I was a PR intern at Michelle Marie PR, and as well as a I was at Society 18, which is like a talent management intern um, for specifically the um, social and outreach intern. Although I did find myself in a difficult position where it was a bit overwhelming at first, but not just because of um, the time crunch. I also just felt like um, at one of my internships, I just felt like I wasn't seen a lot. So I did decide to, you know, um, part ways after a month, but I was still able to, I was really so proud of myself that I was able to, you know, work at two internships while also working part-time at a boba shop, as you mentioned earlier, and as well as doing um, school full-time. So I'd honestly just say, if you are, have the opportunity to, if you really want to, you know, have accumulate a lot of experience. If you have the opportunity to do that, I really recommend to do that. But it is, again, very challenging as well. But if that is something you're interested in, I definitely recommend to do that because honestly, it was very beneficial as to see, you know, what I don't like and what I do like, as mentioned earlier. But yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, this one is for anyone who uh, would like to answer it. Do you have any tips to balance life, work, classes, internships, and more? What helped keep you organized and timely? Um, I can go ahead and answer that. Um, but honestly, I really just try to keep prior prioritize my goals and my, well, not only, you know, my personal goals, but my career goals and life goals in general. I know that a lot of us don't have a lot planned. I was in that same boat as well. But honestly, with overall, I just really try to have a physical planner that really helps me as well, decorate it, make it all nice. That really just motivates me to, you know, keep everything organized school-wise, internship-wise, social-wise. I try to um, keep that on the weekends, you know, try to light everything out and just really just seize the time and take advantage of the time um, you have in your 24 hours of the day. So I would probably say that. Great. Um, the ne next questions, I'm going to kind of answer them, but I also welcome our panel to uh, jump in if something comes to your mind or it speaks to your own experience. So uh, first one, I appreciate the phrases meaningful work and meaningful experiences. How do students approach supervisors when the work is not meaningful or when what was agreed upon in the learning contract is not reflected in the students' internships? In other words, how do we empower students to find their voice to self-advocate without feeling like they could be jeopardizing their relationship with their supervisor? So this is one place where that learning contract really does come in handy um, because I'm keeping an eye on that to see what you will be doing before you get deep into the internship. So it should be uh, laying out exactly the type of work that you are doing. Um, I would encourage you to talk to me or anyone else. And um, if you find yourself in this situation, and before I go further, I also want to um, just mention, I'm not the font of all information. We have a lot of resources on campus to help you. And so I am happy to help you in any way possible, but I also encourage you to take advantage of the Career Development Center and all the other resources that we have on campus about this. Um, but uh, I would uh, uh, encourage you to approach it in a positive way, meaning like you don't want to come across as though you're complaining, but um, this would be a, a great and an appropriate thing to bring up during that midpoint check-in. And this is one of the reasons we have the midpoint check-in. And I, I uh, do uh, 
outreach to supervisors before the midpoint check-in, kind of reestablishing the purpose of it. And so I would recommend that you, um, they're supposed to bring up, like review the learning contract together, but if they aren't, I would encourage you to uh, mention, like uh, when we met at the beginning and developed our agreement, um, we talked about me doing, and I would mention specific examples of what's in there. Um, and then say uh, something that was true to you about like why it's important to you for your professional growth or your re you know you really want to get that kind of experience. Um, how can we work together um, so that I can get that uh, experience uh, in my time remaining? And so you're, um, collaborating on the solution and also finding out if there's reasons why, are there performance reasons that they're not telling you, that they're looking for you to do something before they're trusting you with this other thing. Um, so, uh, so you don't want to come across as like, it's a complaint. Like I want to speak to the manager sort of complaint. Um, it is, how can we, uh, this is really important. I care about this. Uh, I care about this place. I, I really value the experience I'm getting. And I really would like to do this that we talked about. How can we make that happen? Uh, um, did any of you run into this or have your own thoughts on, on the panel? I'm glad you didn't run into it. Um, next one is, so, uh, I mentioned uh, a couple I answered in the chat, but a common question is about ones with student media. A short answer is very limited number of ones with student media qualify because you cannot be supervised by another student. It has to be a faculty member because you have to have that uh, meaningful like interaction. So yes, some count, but it's a very limited number. Um, and, and um, is it better to apply for a lot of internships, even if you don't plan on actually accepting some of them, just to keep your options open? So the first part, I'm gonna, there's multiple questions here. So the first one, I would say, don't apply for an internship if you don't plan to on actually accepting it. Their time is worth something, your time is worth something. And so um, if you don't have any intention of ever taking this internship, then don't do that. Instead, if you just want a chance to meet them, um, consider it for an informational interview. That's something that we talk about in the internship class. Informational interview is when you're asking to interview to learn more about the organization, but you're not for an internship or a job at that time. Is it considered rude to not accept an internship even if you're offered one? No, it's you might be fortunate where you're offered more than one internship. And so you want to decline in a very grateful way, like how appreciative you are of it, but um, people have internships all the time. Will it hurt your prospects with other places? No, not as long as you are professional about it. So what I would discourage you from doing is accepting an internship and then two weeks into it quitting. That can hurt you <laughs> because you're developing a negative bad reputation. You're an ambassador for yourself, for the university. You want to make sure that you're not doing things that could damage um, your reputation. So that's another reason why you shouldn't apply for an internship if you don't actually plan on accepting it. Because if you're not planning on accepting it, you're not really keeping your options open. Because if you're in your heart of heart, like I would not do this, then um, it's not a good use of anyone's time. Um, let's see, some other ones, um, follow-up emails. I love the idea of a thank you email, but would that come across as overbearing? No, it's actually considered very um, appropriate. Uh, we've had guest speakers in uh, Journalism 498 and something that they talk about as an expectation on their end. Um, I'm talking about employers. So you're actually doing something that makes you look better, not worse, by sending a thank you letter? How do you send a follow-up after no response from interviews in terms of wording? How direct should you be? Again, you don't want to sound like a complaint, but it is uh, acceptable to follow up 
keep it short. I'd say just a couple short paragraphs. And you're reiterating your interest and asking if there's any update on it. Um, but that is completely okay. Um, let's see. So my job at a physical therapy clinic is starting a marketing and PR push in 2024, and they wanted me to help out with that. Could that be turned into a technical internship if the owner of the facility wanted to set that up? Possibly. <laughs> uh, the reason I say possibly is um, I was talking to a student just earlier today about this. I would ask to meet with them so that I get a better sense of this. Um, certainly, we've had students who have one kind of job at an organization. They did that whole thing, letting the world know that they needed uh, an internship. And like the communications department said, we will create something. And that's worked out OK. Um, OK, does the a social media intern count? Um, yes, uh, we have people doing social media internships this semester. So you want to be doing things like researching and creating content, managing a social media calendar. Again, like real work, not like filing papers. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, pause here because we're at time and anyone who wants to stick around is welcome. But in, to respect people's time, I... Um, just want to uh, uh, get to the my favorite part, giving out a prize. Um, so in a moment, I'll announce the winners of the prize, but I want to remind you about tomorrow's panel. It features alumni who graduated in the last 18 months, uh, includes a news producer at an ABC affiliate, an alumnus who secured a prestigious fellowship at the Wall Street Journal, and another who works for social media for the LA 28 Olympics Committee. Starts 11 a.m. again and uses the same link as today. But now comes one of my favorite parts, uh, which is giving out the prize. In each session this week, excuse me, we will have prizes. Tomorrow we will draw for Beach Bucks and a sweatshirt. And today we are drawing for a sweatshirt. And I have been sent the winner. I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but it is Marianne Rushi. And apologize if I mispronounced it. B-R-U-S-C-H-I. You are the winner of the sweatshirt and you can pick up the sweatshirt in the JPR main office in um, LA4. Um, please pick it up by Friday, December 8th. Sometimes they sit around and no one picks them up. So please pick it up. And we will have more drawings in each of this week's sessions. So um, once again, I want to thank our moderator and our panelists, as well as you for attending this. Um, if you'd like to stay on while we answer these other questions, you are welcome to. Otherwise, have a great day and I hope you can join us tomorrow. Okay, so circling back to the other questions. Um, let's see. Uh, have you ever experienced imposter system? Uh, syndrome. Our panelists, are you able to stay a few more minutes? Okay. Have any of you ever experienced imposter sy uh, syndrome? And if so, how did you overcome it? Going from a first time food service, customer service job to a more corporate office position seems intimidating. Um, any okay. thoughts? I'm sorry. I honestly say recently, just because I've always, again, admired Tatcha as a brand since I was, again, in middle school, high school. So it's been really like a, oh my God moment. Like, am I really here? Like, do I really have like a like work laptop from them? Do I really have all these things? So it's been really like a shocking moment, but I honestly just really come back to you know come back to earth like it's like you earn this you I really just do a lot of affirmations to myself and just really ground myself and just any sorts of that stuff that really have helped me honestly I haven't really experienced it severely sometimes I do dissociate during work I'm like oh my god like I'm really here uh, just a lot of that stuff but it's never been really severe but I honestly just say just try to be grounded and aware as much as you can and again learn from others as well Uh, let's see. Um, I answered. Okay. Um, what is a good internship if you already have a full time job? Um, so I'm assuming this full time job is not 
um, related to your major or what you plan to do. Um, so I would say one that is flexible. <laughs> I've had students in this position before. So some internships are remote and they give you tasks and as they hold you accountable, but it's kind of like aside from attending like a weekly um, like supervision meeting that you are doing your work on your own schedule. Um, that is probably the best fit for someone in your uh, situation. Um, uh, Emily, you've got another one just for you, which is how many units were you taking? I'm not exactly sure which semester, but pick whatever you want. <laughs> well, honestly, all semesters I've been taking 15 units and um, I believe last fall I was taking 18. So I was just really trying to prioritize time as 18 units is, can be very overwhelming. I was just trying to, again, prioritize my goals and, you know, trying to be successful not only in school, but as well as my internships. So I really just recommend set your priorities straight, um, just to be straight, you know, just to set your priorities straight when it comes to school, as well as being successful in your internship. But yeah, overall, I've been taking 15 units and next semester, again, I will be taking 15 units. That's what makes it really flexible for me. I've just always been really accustomed to um, those sorts of course loads. Uh, Jose, this one's for you. You, I know, discuss this a little bit, but the question is, kindly describe your interactions <laughs> sorry, <laughs> interactions with editors at Beachcomber News um, kind of leading up to your stories being published. Like, what was that experience like? Well, that one's kind of funny because not only do I write stories, but I am the editor. Um, so, but the, it's kind of more nuanced than that. So the way it works is uh, you start with the story idea that you give to your supervisor and like, your supervisor approves it. And then whenever you're done and whenever you attach any media, if required, uh, you email it back to Jay. And then it's about every Wednesday. So I think this will happen tomorrow as well. Well, not every Wednesday, but the Wednesdays of when the newspaper will be published because it's a biweekly issue. Uh, and I'm pretty sure tomorrow is when uh, the editing uh, check will occur. And what that happens is that uh, you get the layout of the newspaper over email and you just uh, correct uh, all the stories. Uh, everyone does uh, their third part in the, uh, the entire newspaper. And if you see that maybe a word uh, is mistyped or there's punctuation errors or any sort of uh, corrections, suggestions you want to give to Jay to make the newspaper uh, better, uh, then you will do that. So equally, everyone is an editor uh, at Beach Community and really pretty much nothing ever really gets taken out. It's more about correction than it is about uh, adding content. The next question is kind of anyone of our two PR students are probably, this probably might speak more to you. Um, says, how was the interview process <coughs> and resume process? I feel like I'm stuck since my work experience is nowhere near related to public relations. Um, I'd probably so, just say just to kind of utilize different platforms. I've known in the past, I know it's not really recommended, but honestly looking at ChatGBT when it comes to wording different words, like for example, um, when it came to, for my personal example, I was working at a boba shop when we did a lot of catering orders, a lot of really in a fast paced work environment, getting events and all sorts of stuff. And I knew that the position I was applying to was for a agency that was in a fast paced environment dealing with events. So I honestly just kind of utilize platforms like that to kind of reward different, um, you know, different tasks in a way, if, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but different tasks and how that can relate into um, those sorts of scenarios. And, you know, also for specifically public relations students, um, I really do recommend adding your courses as well as projects that you've done. I know that sometimes you can mention that in interviews, 
And, you know, that is very much hands-on experience. So I definitely recommend adding that as well. So really just tailoring those personal experiences, whether that be in school, at your outside jobs, and just really apply that and kind of really just tailor those bullet points to that desired position as well. And uh, uh, everyone's had a first internship, meaning like you are not the first person who feels like this. Think about the skills that translate, meaning like you, I, in class I talk about how when I was in college, I worked for a department store. Well, what did I do there? I had, I was, I had to, um, keep track of in inventory. Uh, I interacted with all different types of people in all different types of situations. Those are people skills. So um, it's like uh, demonstrating trustworthiness and accountability through the managing of money, of dealing with a diverse range of people through my customer service interactions. So thinking through those, and that's another place where professors in the Career Development Center can help you um, kind of find those connections. And I know one of our panelists was going to hop in, so I'm sorry. Okay, I wanted to add something that um, happened to me during my phone interview. And it's that um, I also do like makeup and hairstyle like on as a side hustle. And I mentioned that to my um, supervisor and she really liked that. She asked, she like kept on asking me like what kind of stuff I do, like if I post on social media, if I have like my own page and I found that she really liked it. So I feel that I will be like putting that into my resume as well. So maybe sometimes um, things that you think that don't have like anything to do that they don't color correlate with each other um, turns out to be something that your supervisor or the person that's interviewing you like. Thank you. Uh, so the next one I can just answer, which is, does the 498 class meet weekly? So if I have that class on Tuesdays online, would I not be able to intern that day since I have this class? Um, yes, the class does meet weekly. Um, I've had, uh, you, it doesn't necessarily mean you could not work at your internship that day. Here's kind of what I mean by that. I've, um, you would want to talk to your supervisor about this, but they know that you, or they should know that you need to take this class to receive academic credit. So some have been willing to say, like, let's say you are working there nine to five, but they understand that you, like from 11 to 12, 15, you have this class. So they just, you know, cut that out. That doesn't count as your hours toward them, but it's basically like, they build it into your schedule <laughs> um, so that that's possible. I don't know if anyone in here ran into this um, or have other thoughts. I kind of did um, early on in the semester. I was kind of trying to figure out how many hours I should work in the week or specifically what days. But my manager let me know that, you know, I could just add a block space for letting them know I'm putting time on their calendar, letting them know that, you know, I'm not going to be in office. so I won't be able to complete these tasks. And they are understanding that I have school from, let's say, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then plus my commute back home and getting ready for my work day or work evening I should say so it's just been really just you know communicating with um people or your supervisor or manager about your responsibilities as you know we are still in school they know that so just being very vocal and transparent about that so there we have two questions last left one is for Emily and one is for Jose um so Emily since you're just talking I'll just stick with you for this one question for Emily what advice or tips would you give when it comes to working with a company like Tatcha or working in the beauty marketing industry? Um, honestly, I'm still trying to figure this out myself. I still, it's a very competitive space to break into. I know people say tech is very competitive, but beauty marketing is very competitive as it's very like, if you know, you know person. And I've been really fortunate to um, being able to connect with others and, you know, make those connections really easy 
said than done, like make connections, network with everyone or network with people. I'd really just say utilize LinkedIn as your best friend, basically, um, when it comes to message. I'm so sorry for my dog, for messaging with others um, and just making it known that you want to learn more about the company, more about their position. I'm still doing this myself. So a couple, for example, like a couple weeks ago, I really wanted to learn more about road skin. I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone is familiar. So I really want wanted to network with the VP of marketing and the senior marketing manager. So I really just let her know, you know, I've been really interested in their work um, as well as their products and all the work, specifically highlighting work that they've done and work that I've seen and just really admiring that. And I will honestly, I personally have. So honestly, just mess, like mention that in your message as well as, you know, letting them know that you're available to discuss, even if it's not for a position, but still to form those connections as, you know, when a job pops up and an oh, internship pops up, they have you in mind. You can also, you know, send your resume so they can have that in mind as well. So I really just say to connect and network as much as you can. Also really be aware of what's happening in the industry. That's also, I've noticed with my other experiences that they ask a lot about what's happening in the industries and, you know, why you're interested in it and as well as being prepared to work in a fast paced environment. I was, I mean, I was already really accustomed to working really like do, being thrown different projects in an all day basis, but just really being um, open to that idea as well as a very fast paced industry as well. Yeah. And then our last question is for Jose at Beachcomber for the spring internship 2024, they require two features a week. Assuming that you've had the same requirements, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to cough. Assuming you've had the same requirements, how easy or difficult has it been for you to find and write the features? And he also adds, also, thanks, panelists and Professor Hedden. <laughs> but <laughs> So um, I'd have to check the, it's probably on the JPR website because that's the only uh, website where I can find Sort of the learning contract but from what i remember with my learning contract it's uh more about uh at least a 600 word story per bi-weekly issue or uh optionally interns can write a very investigative uh 1200 word sort of feature story uh so hearing that uh we want two more stories every week i'm thinking uh that has to do more uh, with something internally. Uh, I'm not sure if those two weeks are going to be like 400 words each, 600 words, uh, 600 words each. But it is a bi-weekly issue. If you really think about it, uh, you can work uh, both weekends. Um, you have two weekends and even uh, practically two weeks to work on two different stories. So I think you have plenty, plenty, plenty of time uh, to allocate uh, to get the stories in. Um, I would say uh, just talk, if you do plan on working uh, with Page Comics, just talk to Jay, uh, sort of get the idea of what you can bring to the table, even so uh, you have plenty of room to experiment. I hope that stays true for the spring semester because uh, you can write like entertainment stuff, you can write local Long Beach stuff, some international and nat uh, national news. Uh, so I think it should be fine overall. I don't really see a problem with having two stories right in every week. So um, I, I believe we've covered all the questions. Amazingly, um, we had, uh, uh, so we had 120 people uh, for the main session and we still have 32 people who stuck around the extra 20 minutes with us. So I think that speaks volumes to you panelists and um, to you, Sammy, to the information that you provided. I apologize for my coffee. <laughs> um, thank you again for joining us. I really hope that you can join us um, for both or at least one of the sessions later this week. Um, feel free to reach out to me anytime with questions about it. Thank you, um, Dan Olson and Dr. Jennifer Fleming for joining us today. Um, and um, Anything, does anyone else want to add anything before we wrap up?
Okay. Well, thank you so much and uh, have a great day.